Hi, we're Audiovisual Design Group, or you can call us AVDG for short. Over the last decade, we've grown to become one of the largest technology integrators in the United States. Our journey began in 1996, when the Macarena was the number one song in America, and a guy named Robert Scharfer founded AVDG in Silicon Valley. From the beginning, everything we did was rooted in the philosophy that technology integration should be exceptional by design, exceptional tech, exceptional people, exceptional spaces. To achieve this, we became laser focused on process. Employees were thoroughly trained, projects followed a consistent workflow, and customers received outstanding service and guidance, no matter the size or scope of the project. Before long, AVDG was working with top companies in tech industries, both in the Bay Area and overseas, including Oracle, Wells Fargo, and Google. AVDG wasn't just a commercial integrator. We also worked in high-end residential environments. Across California, we partnered with homeowners, renowned architects and developers, including Troon Pacific, Michael Lee, and Robert Hyden. We built lasting relationships through our support division, providing solutions for technology updates, upgrades, and everything in between, while continuing to grow. Through acquisition, AVDG expanded across the country. We acquired TVTI in Chicago, which had built a reputation for its partnerships with architectural firms, builders, and MDUs. This was a perfect fit for AVDG because TVTI was already known for its innovative solutions, which created value for developers and end clients too. TVTI's award-winning approach led them to produce integrations that have touched most of the Chicago skyline. Their work can be found in the city's most prominent towers, upscale condominiums and residential buildings, as well as other developments across the United States. Next, AVDG acquired Maverick integration on the East Coach, which was another perfect fit. Maverick had done incredible AV projects throughout 2 million square feet of some of the finest homes in New England, New York, and the Caribbean. Maverick was one of the first integrators to take an engineering and design approach for residential projects, which allowed them to create innovative solutions based on each client's space and needs. Their specialty was finding smart ways to integrate technology in the construction of these exquisite homes so that usable living space was not compromised while enhancing architectural features through lighting design and other custom solutions. In the process, Maverick worked with many award-winning firms to refine what they could deliver to a client and what the homeowner's experience would be. These acquisitions have been an important part of AVDG's success story. Today, AVDG is now ranked among the biggest and most successful integrators in the country, with seven locations across the U.S. So, what sets AVDG apart? While every technology project is unique, we use a proven process that ensures success every time. We refer to this process as flow or frictionless operating workflow. Flow enables our team to work smarter and faster. Each project is defined by roles and milestones that allow team members to work in the individual swim lanes while also contributing to the big picture. Every aspect of a project has a defined process from the initial sale to the final client handoff. We keep in close contact with our project stakeholders, including general contractors, designers, and electricians to ensure we stay on track. All this is done digitally across multiple projects simultaneously that we can quickly redirect teams, adjust scheduling, and define new milestones as needed. Our process extends beyond the project completion. Clients receive ongoing support and remote system monitoring, ensuring fewer headaches and maximum system uptime. For AVDG, it means an increased customer lifecycle and the opportunity for additional projects in the future. Our process is the secret to our success and is what allows us to grow expand to new markets, and merge with new teams, and while maintaining the consistent quality service we're known for. As we at AVDG continue to grow and innovate our industry, our process will continue to play a vital role in the story of our success.
Hello everyone, welcome to the Unified Livestream. Shivy, it is the last day of the regular season here in the Midwest Esports Conference CLOL 2023 season. And to end our regular split, we've got a matchup between some teams that I think are the most interesting drafters in all of MEC. It's the Drury Panthers taking on a line nine. How are you feeling, man, on this beautiful Sunday? I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. I, I definitely <laughs> love the space. I think it's Space Jam sweater you got yep, on, right? Got it. it is the Space Jam. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I love it. I'm kind of matching with the black aesthetic with me today. Uh, it lo also looks like the sun isn't destroying your eye beams. Thanks to it's Daylight huge. Savings yep. time. <laughs> Thanks to Daylight Savings, which I know everybody loves. They love losing an hour of sleep. They love being tired at 11, even though it's technically 10. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> like you mentioned, I think two teams coming off some pretty, I would say pretty strong wins, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty feel good, euphoric, like obviously Jury uh, beating Purdue Northwest yesterday, but also mm -hmm. Illini's kind of ragtag squad, I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, I think the you've aptly named squad. them the, the Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah, uh, picking up a win as well. I think that is, you know, that's very, very impressive. I think both of these teams, I think a lot, they, I think for different reasons, a lot of the, the, the MEC doesn't really expect that much out of them, right? Obviously, Illini, five different players. Their support is playing top. Uh, yep. They have their, yep. they have one of their, what is it? Com their competitive coordinator. The official title for Mythic, by the way, is competitive <laughs> coordinator. He's playing, he's playing support and he's like, mm -hmm. he found out, I think on Friday or Thursday, he said he's, he has to play. So his coach gave him a list of champions to kind of just work on. Right, like yeah, that is. Yeah, that he was like, that, "We need you on these." <laughs> yeah, Get ready. And, and, then, and then obviously Drury, who's just kind of been struggling, finally kind of getting back in the groove. Ice Grande is back, and I believe he's changed his name. Uh, and obviously Alzahend as well, which has kind of breathed new life into this team. I really, I caught the mm -hmm. games yesterday. Um, they looked very, very good. You know, coming in, winning it two one against a pretty strong squad. I, Purdue Northwest is not a pushover in my opinion. Yeah, and looking at that series from yesterday for the Panthers, I think if they're going to hope to contest against one of these top teams, it may be the Suicide Squad, Chibi, but the Fighting Illini have just looked so clean on the Rift, no matter who is slotted into the roster. So I think it's going to be a tough task for Drury University to come in and pick up a dub to finish their season. Uh, a lot of their struggles against Purdue Northwest, I, I feel like, was around closing the game. It was a really close series against Purdue, so I'm curious if they're able to sort of continue to play up to the level of their opponents, and uh, I think it will be interesting to see what exactly uh, they're going to slot into uh, the rift here. So it should be a, a fun and exciting match here to, to sort of finish off our season. Yeah, and... You know, this might have pseudo standing implications, right? There is a world, uh, you know, where either Illini wins, uh, obviously, or sorry, Illini loses and Drury ends up taking that seventh seed, right? If Illinois loses later on today, I think regardless, if you're seven and eight, you're kind of um, doomed to face two of the top best teams in the league, right? It's either yeah. Auto or GVU who you're yeah. going against. But after yesterday's uh after yesterday's kind of game that we saw you might say hey you know what i want to take on gvu ottawa look very scary ottawa coming back from a massive massive deficit in game one of that series mm -hmm. yesterday and then obviously game two ottawa just absolutely just decimated gvu in game two i think they're you know they were just firing on all cylinders they were the better team that day for sure yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, what stood out to me was that highlight moment at the end of game number one where Ottawa around the dragon come in and Killian close lines everyone into the wall with his NAR ultimate after the huge Oriana shockwave coming from Blonde. Uh, the team uh, really Riverside. Oh, Riverside. Sorry, Blonde, Blonde was out. Riverside was in. And Ottawa looked just completely different. And... Uh, it was shocking to me to see them come back from they uh gvu had ocean soul and, and that wasn't even enough to kind of fight through that so uh yeah really 
fun implications, I think, for playoffs, especially Shivy. As uh, I hope we get a best of five series between those two guys, whether it's in finals or somewhere else. But kind of circling back to our matchup for today, Illini with newbie still up in the top lane from bot lane. Refugo's in mid today. Mid. Maybe we'll see some of that Aurelia pop off and super fast monkey gets slotted into the jungle with Silver Ritter and Mythic down bot. Yeah, we talked about this, right? Uh, a little bit right before in the green room, like. I know all five players are playing, right? The same players, but what roles are they going to? And I, I kind of got my yeah. wish here. Refugo has gone ADC, has gone jungle, and has played mid before uh, mm -hmm. for Alina. So he's slotting back into that mid lane. I loved him uh, uh, on the Jarvan when he was playing jungle. I loved him on some of these, you know, kind of high ganking, high tempo picks. I think mm -hmm. in mid lane, especially with super fast monkey, them playing yesterday, I think both these guys like to play the same game, right? You have some of that synergy. Uh, Mythic mentioned that, you know, these the squad, these players have played with each other before. It's yeah. just, they ha didn't have a lot of prep time, right? And obviously they're kind of moving a couple pieces around here. Mm -hmm. But I think all things considered, I think Silver Ritter in that bot lane has looked massive, right? We saw him take a, a, a huge, huge lead uh, uh, yesterday, and he just kind of popped off on regardless of what AD carry you you gave him, and you kind of almost instantly have to ban Zaya against him, right? He draws yeah. it every single time. Or even, it doesn't even have to be an ADC down bot for Illini, right? Uh, that's one yeah. of the things uh, that makes me so excited to watch them draft. What, Di what Diddy concocts for... Uh, their draft is always super fun. Silver Ritter yesterday taking the Vagar down bot with Mythic's Annie. They've been a huge fan of the Annie, whether in support or even sometimes slotting it in mid. So I wonder if Drury is going to take notes from that as well. Maybe throw that on the ban list and try to shift them away from what has clearly been very comfortable uh, in the recent meta shifts. As uh, I think something we make can kind of talk about now, Shibby, as we get ready for draft for game number one is we've gone through several patches here through the regular season here in the MEC. We're now on 13.5. The jungle changes have shifted a little bit. Counter jungling uh, is uh, the experience was shifted in the damage to make counter jungling a little bit easier. And there's also been some champion shifts. You know, we haven't seen as much Caitlyn Ash duo in the bot lane like we saw at the start of the season. You know, the tank junglers, I feel like, are uh, a little bit less prominent. The Maokai, the Sujuani, a lot of carries in the jungle now. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on the play style, right, for these teams. What lanes or what roles do they really want to facilitate through, right? Do they want to mm -hmm. kind of play this heavy Graves farming jungler, like carry jungler style that Ottawa seems to kind of prefer with Trickster? Or do you want to play more of this kind of gank heavy, you know, skirmishing style jungle, right? Udir, uh, we've seen Gragas in the jungle. Um, we've J4. still seen Sejuani, Jarvan, right? Ganking mm -hmm. heavy, right? Vi as well. Kind of Falling out a little bit of favor, but still really useful for that lockdown if they pick something like this area, if they pick yeah. something a little bit more immobile. I think support pool, we still have yet to see uh, a lot of uh, hard engage. Uh, we've been kind of hyping it up since the changes, when we, and we yeah. really haven't seen Alistar. We haven't really seen, uh, you know, something like the Blitzcrank. I think we've only seen, like, a, a one team pick it up. Like, we, a lot of mm -hmm. melee supports got buffed. We saw the Braum being picked up yesterday, right, with the Varus matching combo, which is absolutely disgusting, right? right? Glacial Frizz yeah. Fissure <laughs> into the Chain of Corruptions or vice versa. You actually can never get onto the Varus, and it makes him such a safe pick on hit Varus coming coming out uh, from Levi yesterday. Seems really strong at the moment. Yeah, and something that for blue side teams, I feel like they can slot that in, B1, slam it down, and uh, I, I think draft really reactively to what is sort of picked in response to the blue one uh so very very fun to see uh again drury versus Illini. we have no idea a, a lot of the time what <laughs> these guys are going to bring onto the rift through draft with between diddy on Illini, uh cooking up some things and drury panthers mastermind i'm looking at you man up in the top lane um so we'll see what uh these guys decide to lock in here as 
the, the draft begins. Phase one of bands starts for a line eye. Mastermind has been the the sole focus, I feel like, and the big pop-off player uh, on the Darius and uh, on other carry picks up in the top. Darius stands up for me, though. I'm, I'm wearing the Space yeah. Ranger, uh sweater for him. Uh, hoping we get to see some of the Slam Jam, but again, instantly banned away. No shocker there. I mean, Mastermind's got a pretty extensive champion pool, right? Yone, Olaf. Jax, Fiora, Set, Renekton, Aatrox, Singed, I think we remember. I think we cast that game. He ended up playing a Rengar top game uh, uh, not too long. Like, a, earlier in the week, he played Graves top, right? This guy's got a pretty, mm -hmm. you know, large champion pool, and he's not afraid to whip it out, right? He's not afraid to be like, you know what? This is, this is a Singed game. I'm going to play Singed here, or this is a Graves game. Um I think having Alzahan back, and obviously uh, this is Ice Grande, just like he said, he changed his name. His name is Azula's Revenge. Having these guys back in, uh, they've just seemed like a stronger team. They still have some issues, kind of the same they've struggled with, you know, what a lot of teams struggle with, you know, at the lower end bracket is that, you know, they have a really hard time closing games out. Like they have a hard time, like yeah. you mentioned, when they get that 3,000, 4,000 lead. They're not transitioning it into Baron, into Dragons, into Pressure, into, you know, gaining vision and getting picks and then setting up for inhibs and all this stuff. It's really, really difficult for them to kind of make those next steps. And I think for this team to kind of, you know, even, had a sh even have a shot at potentially beating or upsetting teams like Ottawa or GVU, who will they most likely be facing, yeah. um, they need to tighten that up. Yeah. And as we kind of work our way through this first phase of bans, Caitlyn actually surprising to me pops up in the list. Meanwhile, Illini trying to limit Alzahan's champion pool in the jungle after taking away Mastermind's Darius, Elise Wukong taken away from the jungle. And, and talking about that bottom tier of teams the, the in the seven, eight spot, and even now Purdue Northwest sitting there at sixth, I think looking from uh, the MEC of past, you know, to now in 2023 with the eight teams we have in the division. I feel like as a whole, the league has honestly grown a lot closer in, in terms of strength. And uh, I mean, Drury last season, I think only picked up one win during the regular season. So I, I think a lot of these teams starting to get used to being in the conference and uh, really rising to the occasion. Um, I'm excited what from what we've seen so far through our first regular season. And there Shibby, it is. You got it, man. You're right on the money with the Zaya. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they don't ban it out, you you have to believe Illini is going to take it. You better believe Silver is calling for it. He's like, oh, just mm -hmm. lock it in. Just lock it in for me. <laughs> uh, Lone Force told us, like, hey, the one thing we need to ban away from when L L Illinois played them at the land the other, uh, the other, other weekend was, you know, just take it away from him. Don't give him. He will lock it in. Yep. Seems like Drury are testing it. They want to run something into this. The Senna being locked in for Mac. You're Ooh. having a, a very eventful weekend. It's All time, your champions. It, the time. Senna is rising. You got the Vigar as well. Another stacking champion. I mean, you're you're having so much fun right now. Uh, I want to the see stacks. them just paired up. <laughs> paired up with the Cho'Gath. Let me see the Senna Cho. Take a page uh, out of... Oh, they're actually going to pair it up with the Seraphine, which is a very Brutal. long range lane. Zaya can't do a lot about it. We can also see the Seraphine <laughs> being piloted by Killer Guy in the mid lane, so it is still a flex option for them if they feel like, hey, you know, I actually have a really good mid lane matchup. Like, I think we could run a carry jungler. I think we can opt in for more of a, a, a tanky, bot, uh, tanky bottom laner, and we could just mm -hmm. kind of run them, you know, mm -hmm. through sustain as we saw the Senna Tom really really effective uh i would say on the side of illini when they ended up playing that yeah and i think this is going to be mythics zillion support getting locked mm -hmm. in here to pair up with civil Ridder zaya now the fun thing with that maybe you lock in udir is open for the monkey illini a lot of times do you kind of go for it? we'll see Hyper is maybe getting my hopes up here, but uh, yeah, Leeson's going to get locked in. Something that, hey, you also don't mind too much speeding up and getting in there. But I think specifically for Silver Ritter on the Zaya, give him some kite ability. You also, I, I mean, with the Zillion, you can either speed people up or, or slow them to a complete halt. So 
I think it also gives yeah. Silver Ritter some kite ability options. I do like the Lee Sin to honestly, like, I feel like the biggest problem with Senna Seraphine is the long range. As a Nocturne. You can't get onto them, right? So the Lee Sin, a potential pick move, hit him with the flash kick, knock him back, nowhere to run. I feel like you can burst him out pretty easily. And the Nocturne pick coming up for what is most likely for Alzahand here, mm -hmm. not the biggest fan of this pick, right? Really? I mean, Zillion, Zillion Zaya, right? Like, how do you, who do you nocturnal, right? Right. You cut the lights, right? You do it. Eventually, what's going to happen is better teams, they'll just group up. They'll 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 stick together. Mm -hmm. If you ult the Zaya, she feather storms. If you ult the Zillion, he's going to ult himself. If you ult either of Zillion's teammates, and he's well <laughs> within range, which he always will be, right? When the Ideally. lights kick that out. Ideally. Ideally. <laughs> He just throws on the ultimate, and now your Nocturne stuck between five members of a line, I potentially four, uh, and you're just dead, right? You don't have any survivability. You don't have Seraphina and Senna healing you because you're going to be so far in. Now, if Jury are going to match this up with even harder engage, right? Something like a Malphite top or a very hard engage mid laner, potentially, then you have some follow-up. Then you have that kind of security where... I'm Nocturne going to dive in. My whole team's going to follow behind me. It doesn't matter who you ult because at the end of the day, we're going to be able to catch your team out. We're going to burst somebody out and they're going to move on to the next target. But if they just leave this Nocturne out to dry Ooh. as the rumble Ooh. gets locked in, the light, the cutting <laughs> the lights into the red carpet could be devastating against yep. Illini Esports. That is some long range commitment options available for jury panthers the encore the rumble ultimate you've got the global coming out from senna but i want to know what's going to happen when you when you blow all your your ultimate cooldowns what's going to happen when you know mm -hmm. zaya kites you out zillion kites you out you're not really much of a champion nocturne doesn't do much after ulti as we see the kaisa getting locked in potentially for refuga that might be a kaisa mid we saw Refugo bring the Kaisa down into the bot lane, and it seems the jack of all trades for Illini is going to take one of his ADC picks into the mid lane. Now, Shippy, I know it's pretty good on ARAM, but do you think we're going to see an AP Kaisa on Summoner's Rift? We potentially will be seeing an AP Kaisa or even uh, a hybrid Kaisa, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that, that opens us up for possibilities as killer guy back on his yone they're gonna take that okay. form this so they do they do have some committal options i'm surprised that uiuc ended up going for the double 80 carry or double yeah adc we'll call it adc for now as we see kaisa's build we can maybe say might be that poke mage build that we usually see mm -hmm. um but mm -hmm. essentially double 80 80 carry composition against something like a rumble yone and Nocturne especially, right? A lot of committal options. Yep. You don't really have an escape if he ults onto you. You kind of have to pray. Like mm -hmm. I said, that Zillion is next to you. You also have Kick for Peel, but UIUC and Juru both making some kind of head-scratcher decisions <laughs> given the champions that are on the board. I feel like both of these guys kind of came in with a set plan because that that Cassante Kaisa was locked in like r almost at the same time. Yeah, in kind of building on that, Shibby, this is what we were talking about before this match. We knew Drury and Eli and I were going to bring out some competitions that uh, we simply were not going to be ready for. You know, good luck prepping against these guys come playoff time because uh, they're going to keep you on your toes. Now, thinking about when these teams might be spiking in terms of power. Drury Panthers, it seems like they've got quite the mid-game power spike with all their ultimates coming online. Yeah, I think they're kind of built for that mid-game skirmishing, right? Early to mm -hmm. mid-game, right? When level mm -hmm. 6 starts coming in, the red carpet, the lights, everything like that. Whereas UIUC, they've got a long ways to go, right? I mean, <laughs> Kaisa mid needs a lot of gold, needs needs at least Ludens plus one more API to really start kind of hammering mm -hmm. in that poke if she is going for that build. Yep. Uh, Zaya two item power spike, Novori plus Essence Weaver, or even um, you can you can go for the non-mythic option or you can go into the Gale Force plus Novori, which is what we typically see. Um, Maybe a shield opt... bow this game. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Might opt in for the shield bow. I'm not entirely sure if, if Mythic's hands are on point. You may never need that shield bow, right? You just throw the ultimate on, you E them out. Mm -hmm. You, like you said, slow the ensuing um, kind of follow-up coming out from Jury. 
But yeah, there's really nothing that screams to me that like UIUC wants to fight for early dragon, wants to fight for early heralds. This seems like a very opportunistic team in the early game. But yeah. once the items start yeah. coming in, once they get the objective set up, that's when they can really start kind of whittling you down. And eventually Super Fast Monkey can say, hey, look here, I'm going to I'm gonna insect somebody, the Senna or this yeah. Herophine most likely. And even newbie up in the top lane can do some uh, insecting in quotes of his yeah. own. He can take someone maybe out of the fight or away from the wall. But I wonder if for Illini, even if they get these picks onto either of the bot laners or some of these carries, is that going to be enough for the rest of Illini to survive the, the wombo combo dive that I feel like they're hoping to execute? What will be tough, I think, is for the Drury Panthers to line everything up. You don't have anything like a Shockwave or an Amumu ultimate to lock everyone down, right? At best, you've got maybe a solid Encore with the Nocturne diving in, and then you bring in the Equalizer or something like that. But there's no like hard CC guaranteeing your teamfight success. Yeah, there's no like hard lockdown like you mentioned right there's nobody there's nobody saying hey this person right here this guy right here we need to dump all of our abilities on it yeah. right because nocturne needs a little bit for the fear to go off obviously you have kind of the pseudo knock up coming out from the yone yep. but all of those are like skill shot based cc whereas like like you said the amumu uh, something a little bit more wide wide area of effect. Sichuani, skill shot based CC, but it's a little bit more forgiving on the hitbox, right? You'll have the Maokai with the twisted advance, all the roots. He's gotten kind of nerfed. You have the Gragas Flash E, which has a really wide width that can stun and kind of he's say, a hey, big boy. This... yeah, he, he's a little <laughs> thick. Uh, and I think I think I think that's a good point to highlight. And Drury's composition seems easy to execute on paper. But it can go very, very wrong if if they're desync, if they're engaged. Which is what we've been seeing a lot of, uh, you know, in the MEC and just from these lower level teams is that they have the pieces, they have the engage. It's just like they're just focusing different targets. There's like three different skirmishes potentially happening in a team fight. When in reality, with this kind of team, you Nocturne, you ult the same person. You yep. maybe use the Encore to kind of follow up with the rumble i think drury's definitely got their work cut out for them if illinois survived the early game they should be fine coming into like this 20 20 to 25 minute mark summoners welcome on to the rift for game number one between illini esports and the drury panthers just wait we'll be loading right into the action momentarily there we go spectator lining up with us now mastermind is in fact on the yone up top killer guy bringing rumble into the mid lane oh. but despite the top laner being on the yone and killer guy being on the rumble they might lane swap here anyway uh yeah so i would actually probably prefer the rumble into the melee top right he kind of really just feasts on these 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 close range top laners, this flame spitter, yep. the E. I mean, yep. Mac, you're a top laner. You know how rough it can be when you see that rumble lock in and you're playing something <laughs> like a Cassante, like a Darius, like a like some Scion, and you're just like, well, what do I do here? He just beats me I in every trade. Say yes, if that. Yeah. And then he's like, no, yeah. you're not. You're not getting any of that. <laughs> yeah, the moment you walk to the wave, the flame spitter comes out. Would be a very smart uh, a swap from them. Uh, mm -hmm. Mastermind, no stranger to these solo lanes. I think that is some of the strength that we've seen across MEC is that a lot of these guys can just kind of swap lanes around and swap picks and, and really just kind of keep that flexible flexibility in their compositions here. As Azula and Fatcat are looking to maybe get some cheese here, but they're going to enter the lane late. Uh, might take some poke from Zillion. Well, Mastermind has been the stud for the Panthers go. to really come through and have a lot of carry performances let's see how he fares in the mid lane he doesn't have the range advantage here it's going to be a little tough for him in the early game to get going he opted for the coal shibby and he's investing in the long term he's got the roth ira set up <laughs> yeah pretty much pretty much he's, he understands that he's never gonna like ever kill 
Uh, Refugo here, unless Refugo plays absolutely horrible, right? He's got the ghost, the flash, he's got so much safety. Alzahan won't really be able to do much. Nocturne ganking early game is the probably one of the least intimidating junglers in the game, right? He just kind of <laughs> walks yeah. in. Ooh, I'm gonna scare you. I'm gonna spook you. And then he just kind of walk away and he, right. just, he goes back to farming his jungle. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. And uh, something that'll be fun to watch is after these counter jungle changes, we see Monkey in early invade talking about bringing it to the Nocturne early on. Lee Sin a lot stronger here through the first five minutes, but it's all well, that dishing tempo. out a lot of damage. Refugo trying to roam around Mastermind shoved underneath the turret. Can't really help out his jungler. Monkey, I don't think he got the better part of that trade. He's forced to back off as we see just how tough it can be up in the top lane going up against that rumble. Yeah, I feel like it's a pretty common misconception that you can kind of invade the Nocturne. He's actually very, very strong. If you can block an ability with your with your W, you mm -hmm. get the fear down, a lethal tempo Nocturne will absolutely shred you down, especially if he gets the enchanted, or the, uh, the not the enchanted, but the enhanced Q onto you, right? Where he gets the trail, he gets more AD. He's actually yep. super yep. strong skirmishing uh, in the early game. Not one to likely invade you, but if you invade onto him, he's more than willing to take these fights. That's now super fast monkey and killer guy. Yep. The burn Ooh. coming through. First blood for the killer guy as he's looking to make it two up in the top lane. But Newbie is able to flash away. And you can tell that killer guy practiced the rumble. He overheated with the Q on the flame spitter so that he would get the flame spitter damage plus the enhanced auto. Really nice mechanics from Killer Guy. You don't really see that a lot from Rumble. They'll always mess up their heat as Alzahan potentially can get on the Mythic. I think he's going to be fine even without the flash. Oh, he's going to have to flash. Wow, Mythic got scared underneath the turret. He's like, they got a lot of ranged damage in that extra... A uh, Seraphine low health bonus, I think, was he was that was too much for him. But the flash oh. from Refugo in the mid lane trading with Mastermind that was almost a solo bolo in the mid lane. As Mythic, you've got no flash, but you've got to be careful trying to stop these recalls. Yeah, he's just trying to play spoiler, kind of keep it annoying. As they know that, yeah, Alzen is in here, so they're gonna call out the back, they're gonna say, Hey, he's back in his base. Play aggressive, Illini, like just look to look to do something here. But killer guy, that was just an impressive turnaround. Super fast monkey kind of came in with too little bit of too little of health. Does mm -hmm. not respect the rumble damage at all and just gets absolutely burned for it. Um, that's gonna be rough. That's a red buff rumble, man. Into a <laughs> melee top laner like newbie. He's definitely feeling the pain. It's now Super Fast Monkey. Gotta go for the repeat gank onto him. Killer guy close to overheating here. Does not have flash available. Newbie gonna try and land the knockback here. There we go. He Ooh. can't escape underneath the turret and the repeat gank up in the top side of the map is successful for Illini. They get some gold thrown back in their pocket. That was big, Shippy, as this wave was crashing in. I think if Newbie was left all alone, he would have been in a really tough spot. Yeah, it, it also, you saw Newbie kind of control the wave state a little bit, right? He wasn't really trying to hard shove. He was doing almost more of a slow push, mm -hmm. calling mm -hmm. Super Fast Monkey over, then killing uh, the Rumble in the in the top lane here, and then trying to force that wave in as much as possible to crash it. Really smart play, Newbie. Even though a kill was donated, he's consistently impressed me with this champion pool. This guy mains support for Illini, by the way. He busted out the 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 gp yesterday mm -hmm, he was also mm -hmm. i believe on the mundo yesterday now he's on the casante this guy has played three different types of champions in the top lane bruiser tank and hard carry and has performed exceptionally well in all three of them he can handle it any which way uh up there as well as down bot what's interesting i think about this matchup as well shibby is i think if the jury panthers come out on top as a little bit of trading in the mid lane not going to be too worried about that refugo is just fine no summoner spells on this kaisa though 
If the Drury Panthers come out on top here, that gives them three wins on the season and potentially puts them out of seventh or out of eighth place, excuse me, might put them into seventh. Illinois College have a very tough matchup ahead of them later on today against the Ottawa Braves, the top dogs here in the Midwest Esports Conference. The Panthers can maybe sneak out of last place if they're able to take down the Illini Suicide Squad. Well, I believe Purdue is also at oh. three wins. Correct? Oh, look at this! Oh. Newbie! Wow! That was an amazing solo kill coming out. The 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 Newbie, like I said, has just consistently impressed me with his top lane champion pool. Gets the solo kill onto the killer guy. And man, kills being donated be damned. I mean, this guy is just on point. Super fast monkey. Playing a little bit of hopscotch, going back and forth mm -hmm. on the Lee Sin. I, I want to kind of head back to your point a little bit about the standings, though. I believe Purdue Northwest has three wins. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. If no, Drury right. actually, if Drury actually come out to the win, they might end up in sixth place. So this is a really big game for them. But Illini looking to play spoiler right now. Silver Ritter on the Zaya. Encore comes out, Azula's Revenge misses though, Silver Ritter able to back off underneath the turret, it's a lot of damage coming out from Fat Cat though, but he can't finish off the kills, just barely too low. Alzahen meanwhile on the Nocturne, headed up to the top side of the map, I think he's gonna get spotted by the Scuttle, not gonna be starting Rift Herald or anything, uh, not I think gonna be able to pull off a dive up top onto Newbie, he's just sort of roaming around, maybe thinking about looking mid. Yeah, it would be hilarious if Jury actually ended up winning this series, ending up in that sixth place spot. I'm not entirely sure how tiebreakers work here. Um, if they would get the head dead over Purdue Northwest, uh, as Mastermind and Alzhan going in. Kaisa, R is out. Doesn't need to use any of her summoner spells. Really well played from Refugo. Super fast monkey was here just to cover. This could potentially be a future playoff matchup, right? Because Illini is also, also solidly in third place. So if mm -hmm. Jury win mm -hmm. this, we could get the salty run back next week. But right now, Illini Esports, despite the small setback in that early game, have got themselves a small gold lead and have been playing really good League of Legends. Just look at the CS differences kind of across the board, especially Refugo against Mastermind. That is nearly a 20 CS lead for himself. He is playing very well. He also has the call in hand, so he's going to be able to get that online much, much sooner. If these guys in the MEC, they've they've clearly paid attention in the finance classes that they've been taking. <laughs> They're opting into the compounding interest. A super fast monkey looking for the dragon. Alzahan looking for the bot lane, but Fat Cat getting targeted here. Super fast monkey takes him down with the dragon's rage. That's the kill for the fight they need to secure the objective. He stole it from the dragon he was taking, and now he's gonna, you know, <laughs> use that the transitive property, take the dragon now here. Alzahan can't do much. You're not really a champion when your Nocturne Ultimate is down, and unfortunately, <laughs> I, I've always yeah. hold this theory with most of the global champions, whether you're playing Pantheon, whether you're playing uh, uh, TF, Nocturne, your first ultimate is arguably the most important one because it sets the pace. It really gets, you know, the lanes going. You can potentially start stacking your ultimate hunter pass if you end up taking that on something like the Nocturne. So if your first gank goes Ari, if your first ultimate goes bad, there is so much time in the window for Alana to abuse that. As Killer Guy, once again, trying to go on a newbie here. This is a battle to death. Newbie brings out the ultimate. Woo! He's dashing in and it's another solo kill. Up in the top lane, the killer guy. Hey, he's out of his element up there on the top island. He's used to mid lane and newbie. He may be a support, but he's showing him how it's done up top. Yeah, an insane solo kill coming out from newbie here. Another one on top of that. Fat Cat late on the Senna ultimate. I really would have thought if that came out just a half a second or even a second sooner, that would have turned the fight for Killer Guy most likely. Yep. As now, Mythic, oh buddy, you have ultimate. Chrono Shift coming in, Resurrect for Mythic, coming online soon, Silver Ritter though, no mana, has to back yeah. away. The flash from Mythic is enough. Illini Esports, they consistently are surviving the ganks that Alzahen's bringing out here. They just keep on finding a way to escape.
Yeah, and I said I wasn't a fan of the Nocturne once the Zaya locked in. Once you saw the Zaya, right? Like, immediately, even the Zillion as well. Once I saw all that, I was like, I don't know if that's the best pick here. And now we just see what happens. You saw them stagger the ultimates. Mythic died in the ultimate, right? He had, couldn't walk out, so he was fine. He flashed out. Silver Ritter burned the ulti for himself, even if you got ulted on by the Nocturne. Now mm -hmm. it's going to be up to Nocturne to kind of come in and say, hey, do I regank this? Uh, do I do I go to a different lane? Like, what do I do here? Rockstar and Ultimate halfway off its cooldown nearly. It's still going to be a ways away, but Silver Ritter's Flash is coming back up. Mythic's Exhaust is going to be up very soon. His Ultimate as well is going to be up before Nocturne's. Like, there's a lot of tools for this bot lane to play very safe, even though Fat Cat and, and, and Azula have been playing very, very well, and they've mm -hmm. been getting turret plates off. They've been poking and using their range advantage uh, well against Zaya and Zillion. Alzan mm -hmm. has been kind of forcing the issue and not really getting much. And what I'm interested to see here, Shibby, is the lane assignment from the Panthers because I feel like in an ideal world, Azula's Revenge and Fat Cat would now be sent to the mid lane away from bot, and you'd throw Mastermind in a side lane, you'd throw Killer Guy into a side lane, but who's going to face up against Newbie? I mean, it's tough facing off in yeah. the 1v1 against the Cassante, who's so strong. 2-0-1 with the Mythic item completed. Meanwhile, Super Fast Monkey picks up the Rift Herald. So now Illini are going to hope to extend this 2,000 gold lead. Yeah, they might look to drop it mid, potentially top lane as well. I think Newbie, yeah, it is at two place. They could look to get that first circle gold. All is ahead is here on the backside with the doctor and they want to gank newbie but again newbie has a get out of jail free card with his ultimate right if he positions it correctly he could just take that way back to his bay similar to what a set would do with their ultimate mm -hmm. uh gotta be interesting yeah all zen backs out it's just no good targets at the moment refugo both summoners up and the ultimate now silver ritter has everything available at their disposal mythic is ultimate is up his flash is almost quarter of the way before it's coming back up here. Like, there is just no window of opportunity. All Zen looking to force something right now. The ultimate comes out, but paranoia. that's just a zoning. I mean, he looked a little paranoid using that one. <laughs> <laughs> Trying oh. to defend the turret. Here comes the equalizer, but uh, again, not going to be very effective there. Mastermind not using his ultimate. The Panthers a little out of sync, trying to defend their turret, and th this... Wombo combo sort of composition with a lot of long range engage. They might have to look to start grouping a little bit sooner here. Illini using it in mid lane. Refugo able to finish off that turret. I think Drury needs to put it in Wombo. I think that's the, that's kind of the issue <laughs> for them. Because <laughs> right now, nothing is syncing up, right? The paranoia came in, then the red carpet. He's, ideally, you want to use both. Because then you can't really react to it, right? You don't know mm -hmm. which direction it's going once it's on top of you. Uh, you can kind of keep it hidden. Also, like you said, the Fate Unsealed not coming out. I mentioned the desync coming out from Drury and some of these teams struggle with this as Super Fast Monkey. Also, Hen forced to flash away <laughs> in the Dawning Shadows just too late. Fat Cat and Azula's Revenge now. Have to be a little worried about the potential dive here. Illini are four strong, but they're just going to turn their attention to the objective, to the dragon. They're just playing it so cleanly here. Up five kills to one. All the lanes look ahead for Illini. Yeah, that one kill that killer guy got, that was really the only kind of highlight for this Drury Panther squad at the moment. I think we do have some safety with Azula and Fat Cat, go. Fat Cat though. They have been doing very well in this lane, amassed themselves mm -hmm. a small CS mm -hmm. lead, but also they've gotten, I believe, three turret plates down in that bottom lane for themselves. They don't really have kill pressure, though. They picked a very supportive bot lane, and the rest of their team is just not doing so hot. It feels really bad when you've built utility, and the rest of your team is just not able to utilize it a lot. Utilize it very well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now... At the 16 minute mark, Illini with the 3,000 gold lead here. Newbie still taking care of business up in the top lane. Uses the ultimate killer guy about 50% HP. Equalizer is up oh. here, but he's not going to be able to use it. Newbie, three solo kills, Shibby, popping off in the top lane. Yeah, that was like pretty much under the turret, right? Yeah. Newbie, like, <laughs> oh, look at the like, dance. You know he's dancing on him. 
yeah, he's just going in right now. Newbie also gets the proc onto the turret, the demolish. He picks up that lane for himself here. Mastermind, but the objective bounty has started here. He's not going to be able to finish off. Refugo's going to get the kill. Does get the turret, but Refugo finishes him off. Illini Esports, seven kills to one now. I think the second Rift Herald of the game spawning up here shortly, and they've got all the solo lane assignments they want here. It feels like Newbie and Refugo can tango with anyone on the side of the Panthers, and Drury need to start hunting for some team fights, or Illini might just run away with this game. I I think right now it's pretty much do or die for Jury Panthers composition. We said they would have a good early to mid game, but right now they've just fumbled it at every every moment, right? The paranoias, the red carpets, like they haven't really been able to kind of sync that engage up and really mm -hmm. make, kind of get that dream composition. I mean, look at just how far Alzan is behind in itemization. This guy has been sitting on, playing steel claps and that nimble axe for, I believe like two or three minutes. He has yet to finish his mythic. Meanwhile, Super Fast Monkey has the Eclipse, has the boots ready, picked up Dragon, picked up two Dragons, picked up the Herald as well. I mean, this guy's been so proactive on the map, even if the KP doesn't necessarily indicate that, he's just been putting a lot of pressure on these objectives, taking advantage of his lanes. And look at this, now he's taking the second Herald as well. Really good team play from Illini Esports, who again, are playing with like brand new players, right? No People that haven't played together, Newbie typically plays support, he's playing top lane, and the rest of Illini have kind of just banded together these subs and, and emerge and these subs and other players just really, really playing well. And look at this now, Newbie feeling so confident in the 1v1 matchup. He uses the ultimate once again to drag the killer guy out from underneath Ooh. the turret, and the ultimates once again are just far too late. Two members of the Panthers prowling down to the bot lane. Should be they're looking for newbie. They can't find the Cassante, but they do <laughs> finally stop the recall. Newbie in a tough spot here. 1v2. I don't think he's gonna be able to come out on top of the Rift Herald is being used. Chibi, it is all a bait. Monkey falls. Newbie is still alive in the bot lane. He's hanging on, wasting so much time getting the shields, getting the damage. All Zahan barely survives, and now Rift Herald is crashing into their base. Yeah, with all that time used into that bot lane, with Newbie just staying alive for so long, they're gonna pick up a 19 and a half minute inhibitor, prepping <laughs> themselves for that Baron that's gonna come in 20 seconds. Illini Esports could easily just take this on respawn. All the, the, the beautiful recalls coming out from Illini, the Honor 5 recalls, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Illini Esports have been playing the map perfectly, have been playing the game near perfect, as they've only lost one turn and have given two kills away. Shibby now looking at Illini. We see the bot lane head back down to that part of the map. Some vision control getting dropped down from the Panthers. Uh, at this point, you've got some huge power spikes coming online for Refugo. He opted for the quick blades. I think Silver Ritter's going to do the same thing. And uh, they're they're doing some some really solid things here on the Rift. Newbie's just teleporting down into the mid lane. He's looking for a fight. The Equalizer gets dropped down. Zoning ultimate to try and uh, save away the rest of Illini. There's the Encore. But the repeats, oh. just uh, the killer guy going to be taken down once more. Yeah, and the ultimate comes out the Chrono. Chrono Shift, I believe, is, mm -hmm. is what it's called, uh, from Zillion, uh, just saving his team, saving himself here, and there's not really an engage to be seen. Jury Panthers, though, could look to make something out of nothing right now. Big engage from Mastermind. He finds a lot of them, but it might just be too late. Paranoia into the back line. Refugo gets shut down. Newbie, though, is slicing and dicing through the back line of the Panthers and knocks back Alzahan. That's four total going over to Illini. They still got Mythic and Monkey pushing into the base now. The killer guy going to try and buy time for his survival. The bomb's coming off from Mythic. The base defense somewhat successful. Illini decide to back off. I mean, that was just kind of like a useless fight for Illini. I mean, they we saw this yesterday. 
Yeah, they kind of just dove, didn't really get an objective. They got a couple of kills. They gave some gold over. They are going to be able to pick up the dragon on the way out because of Alzahen dying there a little bit later. Uh, so that is that's kind of a bonus for them. But they didn't really need to take that fight, right? They could have just walked to the dragon, wait for it to respawn. They can also go to Baron after this. I think, like we said, like you said yesterday, they're kind of having fun with it. I think today they're also having fun with it right now. Uh, you know, just kind of feeling themselves. A lot of these players, like Super Fast Monkey, Refugo, Silver Ritter, these guys don't normally play, right? They're not part of that, like, um, four or five roster. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, mm -hmm. hell, you know, let them, let them play. Let them have some fun. I mean, this is really, really... Uh, playing in these collegiate games is, is definitely an, uh, a unique experience for a lot of these guys. So, uh, more power to them, I say. <laughs> and especially, I think it's a rarity to get to this point in the game where you're like, okay, we feel pretty confident that we can close this one out. It's a big lead. It's 14 kills to four, three dragon advantage. We got Infernal Soul potentially coming online here shortly. Baron Nash here, maybe not going to get contested, but four members of the Panthers run into the objective, but they might just be too late. It's secure, and Monkey with the smite picks up Baron. They're going to take that in really quick time as Alzahan. Monkey going in. Mythic trying to slow him down. There's the kick back to the rest of the team, but the paranoia is his way out. Equalizer comes on down through. Monkey's going to get rezzed up here. Silver Ritter firing away. Refugo as well still alive. The ADC still hanging in there. Refugo now stealthing in, firing away. Raining Hellfire down on the Panthers as Silver Ritter takes away his Quadra and potential Penta. This might be it. Shibby has purpled up super minions are crashing into the Nexus turrets. Yeah, the TP comes out to keep the minions alive here. Not even opting for that AP build or hybrid. The double ADC composition from Illini as newbies going in and having some fun. Illini Esports in 24 minutes, decidingly taking game one from Jury. And from start to finish, I feel like it was a really clean performance from this substitute squad. Refugo on the Kaisa mid handling business. The Drury Panthers tried swapping the lanes, sending Killer Guy on the rubble up to top, sending Mastermind into the mid lane. In any way you sliced it, it was a tough matchup for the Panthers or uh, their solo laners to go up against Illini's squad here. Refugo's Kaisa, I felt like, just was from literally like the start of the game he like chunked out mastermind to half hp at level one with the akathian rain and just the auto attacks coming in raining down so uh it just wasn't enough the panthers we talked about their team fight composition and it just never really came together in a big 5v5 moment yeah and i think you know you look at the order of of draft here right on the bottom mm -hmm. right zaya gets locked in all right senna seraphine very strong into the Zaya, right? Outranges them, has a lot of sustain. Zaya can never really kind of threaten an all in, but you can always kind of poke them away. All right, mm -hmm. Zillion Lee Sin gets locked in. And so for your third pick for your jungle matchup, you pick Nocturne into that team? I mean, we just kind of saw what happened. I don't think one paranoia used in that laning phase got guaranteed a kill. I don't even think a summoner was burned, right? Like it was really rough um for all the hand and i don't know if he was calling for that pick or i don't know if that was a pick that was decided on by the team but uh, uh that was just not 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 ideal drafting in my opinion i get what they were going for i get mm -hmm. that they wanted kind of this all-in composition you have the long range support with the senna and the seraphine encore it makes sense on paper but these guys drafted like Probably the best, some of the best peel champions in the game, right? The Zillion, the Zaya. Uh, you have uh, you have Cassante. You can kind of just isolate, like you said, an individual. Lee mm -hmm. Sin can play mm -hmm. engage and disengage. Like there's just too much to work around, and it's too too much to cut through. That yep. we saw just wasn't there for Jury. I think stop getting cute, make it simple, uh, and just win the games because you guys are a good squad. You guys yeah. can keep. Keep it, you guys can keep it, you know, blow for blow with a lot of these really good teams in the early game. Don't stunt yourself and force yourself to kind of execute on something that may you, you may not have practiced. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
And that's one of the Sorry. fun things we get about the best of three series, Shibby. These teams get to go back to the drawing board and try and cook up something different for game number two. We're going to hop into a quick break as we get geared up and ready to go for the second match. Don't click out of that browser. More Midwest Esports Conference CLOL action coming your way soon.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the Unified Livestream. We're continuing on our coverage of the final day of the regular season here in the Midwest Esports Conference Sea Law 2023 season. Our first set of the day surprisingly taking place in the afternoon. Chevy Illini taking on the Drury Panthers in game number one. The match ending before the 24 minute mark. It was kind of a speed run with Shelly taking an in hit before Baron even and spawned the fighting Illini really showing us that even with the substitute squad here not much changes they still bring the fun drafts and they still bring the pain on the riff yeah uh, it's it's really telling like when Illini esports coming in with five five different players right five mm -hmm. new players and then you just they kind of just come in and they're like all right we're gonna play <laughs> We're gonna play Cassante Top. We're gonna play double AD carry uh, yep. mid jungle or mid ADC, right? Uh, we're gonna lock in all these kind of wacky champions. Uh, you you get uh, you you get super fast monkey on the Lee Sin. Like these are all like high skill show offy champions. You can tell like Alina is having fun with it, right? You can mm -hmm. tell that they're like, you know what? These games don't really mean a lot. I mean, maybe we, we luck out, we get a seeding, maybe GVU gets upset, but we're not gonna bank on that. So let's have fun, let's play our game. And honestly, them playing like kind of loosey goosey has really kind of unlocked a different side for Illini to me, right? Like these guys are very, very clean, a little bit reckless, but <laughs> clean in their laning, clean in everything else. Yep. Uh, and I think this is a very, this is a scary squad from Alina, right? This is not no substitute team. This is this could be like a, a contending team at MEC if they wanted to. Yeah, exactly. And for game number two here as we hop into draft, the sides no remain side the same. No, yeah, no side swap. Mastermind still though losing his Darius. So the sides stay the same and the bands might stay the same as well as J4 uh potentially also getting taken off the board. Darwin being taken away. Don't know if Super Fast Monkey is the the, the, the staunchest uh, Jarvan player <laughs> here. He plays the least Sid. I think he wants to play a little bit more uh, flashy stuff. We wanted to see the Udyr, right, when they locked in that Zillion. Mythic Zillion. Uh, it got banned out yesterday. I'm not going to say it's ban worthy. Like, he was very clean on it, right? He was yeah. landing good double bombs. He was landing really good ultimate timings, right? The slows are very good. I don't think that was the issue. I don't think Azula and Fat Cat necessarily think that's the issue. I think if you give them a bot lane like that, even Silver Ritter got the Zaya that he wanted, but they were still down in CS. They were still down in turret plates. I mean, they got counterpicked. For all intents and purposes, they got counterpicked in that bot lane. Mm -hmm. And I think the rest of the map for Jury, like Mastermind, all the killer guy, I think just pick something a little bit easier, pick something that'll, that can team fight a little bit better, that doesn't require uh, this kind of insane timing with you guys and the insane synergy, and just pick something that has a definitive, I'm gonna press this button, everybody else, let's go. Yeah, we're ready, let's make it happen. As uh, Annie and Elise, the second bands here, Drury Panthers, I wonder if we're gonna see the Zaya pop off. I know uh, that it wasn't like the biggest impact champion in terms of their like strategy it wasn't like oh my gosh silver ridder zai is just completely taking over but if they want to play around this bot lane it might help to take away a champion with a lot of safety uh like that zion we know I, I think if it doesn't get banned away here it might just get first picked once again senna being taken off the board sorry mac uh no no Dang no it. senna today zillion <laughs> Though, I didn't think it was ban worthy, but Drury have obviously thinks otherwise here has kind of laid laid foil to their plans. They're all in dive composition. Yep. Darn you, Chrono Shift. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at the sky here, but newbie, I assume that that's gonna be a Vigar, but it could go into Refugo's head, could also go into Silver Ritters if Drury did their homework they know that this is a very possible flex pick between the mm -hmm. two here mm -hmm. so Drew, they have to be careful they have to kind of make sure that they're always keeping that option available for them uh and understanding like hey you know this guy could flex it mid they could flex it bot let's not kind of draft ourselves into a hole as vi jinx getting locked in arcane <laughs> Dude, I knew he it was it, coming up. It. <laughs> I, I knew Hyper queued it up like as soon as I saw. And they're going to take it here. 
The arcane duo being locked in. Very strong. I think Jinx getting some recent buffs. I believe her her uncapped damage right to the to the to the monsters now does 1200 so it matches smite so you can get mm -hmm. some shenanigans there if you can steal an objective i believe she got a little bit of a slow increase on her w as well so a bit of a stronger laner two item power spike as well really really strong right you see the kraken into potentially the ie with her you can just see kraken into phantom dancer mm -hmm. we've also seen immortal shield but i think there's jinx is one of the few ad carries that can reliably go all three is now the thresh being Yippee. locked in for mythic there might be go. thresh vigar bot heimerdinger that's a nice answer to the thresh doesn't have a really way, good way to get in here a lot of push a lot of safety you provide a lot of turnaround potential in a 3v2 but instead the hooks mr krabs the hooks <laughs> So far, I, I like this Vi lock in for the Panthers, as I, I feel like Alzahand could really use some onus on him in the early game, get some of those ganks rolling. Uh, the Nocturne Ultimates on a really long cooldown wasn't able to really get anything going, so Drew Panthers trying to adapt the game plan here a little bit. I, I think if, if Senna Seraphine is on one side of the spectrum, for this bot lane should be jinx jinx nautilus might be on the very opposite end <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely jury going in once again for that kind of all-in composition here but instead mm -hmm. not giving that kind of engage potential onto the the jungler and, and more so the mid lane but having that follow-up having that kind of go button with the jungler and the yeah. support right <laughs> I think it's a lot easier now. You have Fat Cat, who is really good on these engaged champions, in my opinion, who has a lot of of solid roams as well. We've been seeing out from him. I think if you can pair up with Alzan and they can start kind of wreaking havoc on the map, that's where players like Azula, like Killer Guy, can kind of start popping off on this Jinx. And we're going to see what Killer Guy ends up locking in here as the second round of bans come in. Cassante being taken away in Gangplank. The newbie bans are coming in. This guy has played top lane for one day, Mac. <laughs> And already he's at the top of everybody's hit list, but after three solo kills in lane, can you really blame the Panthers to try and limit this guy down uh, as we finish off the second phase of bans here? A line nine not changing very many things up from the first game. Aurelia and Olaf once again going to pop up. Uh, Mastermind though, still Yone is an option. Uh, I wonder what else we might see come up here general meta pick stuff like the Jax is still available the camille uh certainly an option here for some uh mid top synergy camille galio potentially available but atrox a classic a staple up there you know no one's surprised to see that uh as an option i wonder though uh would something safer no. like the narve maybe been an option uh don't they let don't hyper they don't don't, don't let yet. don't let draft play with your emotions here we have to stay Calm and peace of mind until things get locked Nubi in. Nubi doesn't counter pick. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like I like I like the Malphite, especially into this kind of low mobility composition, right? The Jinx mm. doesn't really have anything anywhere to go, right? You ult on top of her. Unless she has flash, she's dead. Lane's pretty decent into the Aatrox. I think Aatrox can definitely outskill it a little bit if he hits those sweet spot cues. Mm -hmm. If he can kind of use his mobility to his advantage. I don't think Malphite has the, the 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 easiest time up there as Kaisa once again being locked in. But I this actually might be the Refugo Vigar and the Silver Ritter Kaisa, or it might just I don't be know. like we I said, don't the know. swap. I don't think so. I, this That's is, a hot take. You don't think so? You really? Oh, <laughs> the go, Nico. I'm going Refugo back on the Kaisa. That will be my expectation, but you know, Shibi, if we want to be, want to be normal, yeah. Oh. Okay, it is Refugo on this the Kaisa, Kaisa once again. Yeah, yeah, you gotta take trust it anywhere. The <laughs> Silver Ritter with the Vigar as well. Jury Panthers though drafting themselves a pretty solid composition, right? It's mm -hmm. a lot simpler. It's a lot of good press R buttons. 
you've got the Nautilus, you've got the, the Vi, you've got the follow-up with something like the Nico, you've got long-range follow-up, potentially execute potential with the Jinx, and all meanwhile that's happening, Aatrox is flanking your backline, he's causing a muck, he's running havoc, hey, he's wreaking havoc, sorry, uh, into your backline. So I, I really like this composition from Jury. I think Eli and I have been drafting uh, a little bit reactively, but have primarily taken mm -hmm. everything uh, what they've what they wanted, right? Like they got the Malphite mm -hmm. and the Aatrox. Refugo got his Kaisa. Silver Ritter got his Vigar. Mythic gets the Thresh. This time around, his Zillion mm -hmm. getting banned out. Super fast monkey running back the Lee Sin. I think he played very, very well on it. it was, yeah, has yeah, the right real. amount of aggression. Other than mm -hmm. that early kill, that killer guy got onto him where he was came a little bit low. He bounced back immediately and just was doing work on the Lee Sin. Yeah, and. I think what stands out to me in this draft is the lack of mobility for some of these carries on the side of a line eye, specifically Silver Ritter on uh, on the Vagar. He's going to have to rely on Mythic's Thresh here with the Lantern to get out of some of these sticky situations because you've got a Vi barreling down onto you. You've got the Nautilus looking for Hook City, looking for the dredge line. A lot of a lot of dive potential with the Aatrox potentially flanking as well. Silver Ritter's positioning has to be on point if he has any hope of surviving some of these fights. Yeah, that Thresh Lantern is gonna be so crucial, right? I mean, you could get into some shenanigans where Vi ults the Vigar and then the Thresh Lantern drags him back and now Vi is kind of taken into your team, similar to what happens when you flash a twisted advance, but Mac, we're here for game two! Summoners, welcome on to the Rift. Illini Esports and Drury Panthers here once again meeting each other on the Rift. This is going to be our final time here during the regular season. This is the final week, Shibby. Next week we've got playoffs, and I'm so excited to see, you know, who's going to rise to the occasion come playoff time. Yeah, newbie just having a bit of a dance, a chuckle in that top lane here. Um... So far, it's just a five-point defense from these guys. I don't think mm -hmm. it's anything too crazy at the moment. Um, but should be looks quick. Like thing. Oh, this this is the new Nico, right? Where she can transform into no. like plants and stuff. No, or no, 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 Not no. Yet? I don't think Dang I don't it. think that's been shipped. Uh, you you got me excited. <laughs> no, I don't think that's been shipped just yet. I think they're still kind of working out. Some okay. of the kinks, and okay. honestly, That's fair. <laughs> some of the bugs that would come with that. I know, I think they had a dev blog recently where they were talking about, like, why it's a lot more difficult, right? I mean, obviously, you're, you're coding in the fact that she can change into minions. She can yep. change into plants, <laughs> like you said. Like, she can change into, I believe, jungle monsters. There's a lot of different things you can change into. You're fundamentally changing uh, the champions, one of the core mechanics. So, mm -hmm. a lot of trouble mm -hmm. coming around that. But I still think, Nico... A lot of strong bursts, has a lot of trickery potential, has a lot of uh, uh, um, um, sneakiness behind her engage. And I think mm -hmm. given the right player, if Killer Guy can kind of execute on this on this Nico, use all the tricks, use the hidden engage, all these kinds of different things that you can kind of use her for, uh, I think they have a really strong team fight with Drury. And I think they're set up better for success to get to that team fighting point. I mean, you've got melee, melee up top. Mastermind up in the top this time around. Level 2 first for the Drury Panther bot lane as Mythic getting low. The Ignite comes out and forces the flash away. Mythic extremely low underneath the turret and in mid lane as well. The killer guy ranged on ranged against Refugo's Kaisa this time. Range on range, like you said. Killer guy really, really good. I think he feels a lot better on on this nico than he was like you said on the yoda i mean he was just getting bullied out i think level two you said the akathians like raid revenge came out <laughs> the lethal tempo started attacking and we saw killer guy like half health um so oh. he's gonna be able to pilot that oh solo kill from mastermind onto newbie getting his revenge really well played with the chains the enhanced q Newbie opting in for the corrupting potion. Monkey. Isn't that tanky? Up top. Monkey, though. Here we go. Looking We've got fights gang. all over the map here. Monkey trying to help out Newbie up top once again. Mastermind, the chain's going to slow him down. But I think the Drury uh, top laner going to fall there. 
a one for one trade at the end of the day as a bot lane turret uh coming under attack here potentially shibby uh the minion wave kind of shoving in yeah and smart of mastermind to not burn like a flash or anything i think he knew he wasn't gonna get out uh super fast, super fast monkey correctly holding the Q until he potentially saw that come out instead just autoing him to death with the red buff really smart yeah. um both of these both of these players you know trying to like maintain their resources as best as possible mastermind like you said gets ganked still got that kill lead still got that gold lead right the first blood coming in double long sword for himself into the one cloth armor and corrupting potion for newbie this is not as flashy of a champion so newbie him outplaying and him kind of getting the solo kill onto Aatrox will be really interesting. He was on the Cassante, he was on the Gangplank, he mm -hmm. was, you know, he was on mm -hmm. these champions that have a lot more flexibility when it comes to damage. A super fast monkey now, looking at gank Once mid. the right one flashing away, Alzahend coming in, Refugo forced to try and escape. Alzahend though can't finish him off. No red monkey buff. low as well, no kills going over, but a counter gank with a big old punch, Alzahend comes up huge. Refugo living with like less than 10 HP is what I saw there. Both summoners burned the ghost and the flash just to get out of range here. Um, I would say a successful counter gank for all Zen, right? You trade essentially double mid summoners for your flash plus another one, and now the hook comes in. Ooh. I think he got knocked out of the W because of the death sentence. Alzahend looking for a play down bot. Azula's revenge getting low. A potential dive here as Silver Ritter low on dead. mana. No has to try and save his support, but he can't quite do it. Dodges the zap. Is he going to try and stay underneath the turret for it? Meanwhile, up top, super fast monkey once again. Uh, looking for a gank, but Mastermind not under much pressure there. No ultimate just yet from the Lee Sin. Yeah, showing some love to that top side once again. Mythic had no flash available. They took a really heavy trade, and then Fat Cat said, you know what? We could kill here. Hits the dredge line. Alzan coming in, looking way better on this Vi than he was on uh, on the Nocturne last game. Oh, level six first, though, for Newbie. All those games. Newbie? The minion wave advantage. Another outplay. Shippy, you were wondering how it was going to happen. Well, just put him up with an unstoppable force. Oh, man. That was just... He just clicked buttons, right? Like, he just all he did. <laughs> he didn't really do anything too crazy. He didn't have to do anything too fancy. He went, boop, beep, boop, boop, boop. And you're fucked. And you're dead. <laughs> As Drury Panthers gonna take the dragon <laughs> here. Illini Esports not able to trade anything back. You'll have to check your mail here soon, Shibby, if you keep letting those ones out as uh, we see the big use of that lantern uh, to try and help keep Silver Ritter safe here. But the first big objective, the Panthers secure Dragon in Alzahan's Vive. Been quite impressed with it so far here throughout the early game as he gets level 6. I'm curious, the bot lane, they're going to be able to set up some more plays here on uh, what feels like a vulnerable Silver Ritter in Mythic. Yeah, I think they have been having a little bit of trouble in that bot lane. Azula and Fat Cat, that, that, that week one early synergy is coming back into fruition for them. And mm -hmm. they've been looking really, really good despite, you know, kind of facing these oddball bot lane matchups, right? You face against the Zillion, you're going against the Vigar, right? That's not, that's not a bot lane you go against normally. These aren't champions you normally see down there. But they've been handling it pretty well. They understand their champion strengths. They understand what they can do. And really calling Alzahan down for these ganks while trading super aggressively. I think, I think honestly, with Newbie playing so well and maybe Mastermind kind of, you know, just generating a lot of pressure, Alzahan should just play towards the spot side, play for the dragons, play for Jinx as well. It's a very strong win condition. I think if anybody can do it, oh Azula gosh, can definitely kind of hoof it. Newbie, no he's just going to wait for his cooldowns to come back up. Seismic Shard, but here comes Alzahen. Newbie has to try and kite around and wait for his ultimate. There it is. He slams <laughs> down and takes out Mastermind. He's going to get out. He's got the move speed. He's got the plants. He's eating up the honey fruit. And boy, isn't it sweet, Chevy. He's feasting not just on the fruit, but on the MEC top lane buffet right now. <laughs> Newbie showing, you know, I, I, I swapped to support. 
not because I wanted to, but because I wanted to show mercy to MEC's <laughs> top lane right now. Newbie solo killing two times now on the Malphite and getting out from a 2v1 gank. Alzahen's got the ultimate ready. Super fast monkey also level six here, but the lantern out from Mythic to safety. Three Panthers, they're losing out on the top side of the map once again. Similar, I'm getting deja vu from game number one. I wonder if they're going to be able to adapt mid-game and maybe stick with Illini here in game two. I think Alzen has the right idea, <clears throat> right? Um, going in that top side, maybe hopefully picking up a kill. I mean, Nuvi just kind of got out. That's unlucky situation. Well played from him, right? Using the Malphite Q, using the R to confirm the kill on the Mastermind. But I think right now, you start focusing on mid, you start focusing on bot. I mean... At one point, Refugo had no summoners mid. Like, that is that is the cue to go and start camping this guy. That is the cue to say, hey, I'm going to start using my 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 ultimate here. I'm going to lock you down. I've got a lot of bursts coming out with Killer Guy on this. Nico has the flash ignite as well. Like, oh, I would just start punishing Refugo squad. heavily. They're sending Yuri. everybody up here right now. Spots out oh! Killer Guy. Spots out Alzahend. They see it coming on the top side of the map. And the potential gank fails. Now Gloom coming out here. The killer guy using the ult. Oh, he hooks Look him over. Out. Mythic is here to help out the team. Refugo helping out killer guy over the what? wall. Super clean monkey with a kill up in the jungle. Super clean monkey. Mythic, the unsung hero. She used Vi out of her charge. So now she has to burn the flash over. But it's not enough. Illini Esports just firing on all cylinders. Everybody is on the same wavelength right now. Newbie saw the gank coming in. Oh, oh he steals the, he steals the red barrel, Zula! That's, a, that's what we call Azula's revenge, I think. <laughs> that is the revenge he gets. He's like, you know what? You killed my team. No Rift Herald for you. Let's see, Alzahen's gonna try and sneak in and pick it up, but Mythic's trying to zone him away. Even Fat Cat's coming together. The Eye of the Herald oh. disappears. The Drury Panthers can't pick up the reward from their steal, but another hick onto Alzahan. Super Fast Monkey gets rooted by the Flame Chompers. He gets stuck trying to take the Sonic Wave. It was a one way trip back to the base. Yeah, I mean, you kind of int for it a little bit. Super fast monkey, though. He's going to say worth. He denies the Herald. You know what? I lost it, but they didn't get it either. Guys, don't worry. Uh, only the gold, I believe, going over to Azula's Revenge here. Despite everything that's happened, though, Illini Esports only have a 500 gold lead. Jury Panthers looking a lot better than they did in game one. Azula's Revenge, a lot of CS picked up on this Jinx. She's at 110. Mm -hmm. We're hitting the 10 CS per minute mark, Shibby. These are the, the top tier player CS numbers here. What we really like to see here on the MEC. Oh. Another ultimate newbie immediately coming back up into the top lane. World Ender popped. Another top 1v1 here up on the island. Uh, the show match of the mythic, MEC man. it's been today. But the Iceborne Gauntlet, he's freezing them down. Flashing trading over the wall. Slamming him into the ground, newbie on a killing spree. Is that three solo kills again in the game? Yeah. In back to back. Yep. Now Event Horizon clogging up the Panthers in the river here. Alzahen looks to dive, but he just gets bursted down once more. Ultimate doesn't come out. It was on cooldown. Refugo with another kill. Killer guy in Azula's forced to back away. It looks like the second dragon of the game goes over to Illini. And Alzan cues into four members is like, hey, wait, guys, where's the rest of my team? Gets kicked out, gets bursted through. Really well played from Illini Esports, kind of catching this pseudo dive from Drury. They pick up the Ocean Dragon. They pick up a couple kills in the top lane. And we get a nice little Chemtech Drake and a Chemtech Rift uh, for us. It's a visual us. bug again. I saw a little bit of it. They they gotta fix that up. There was when the when the Chemtech Rift spawns. They've got a real little weird square action going up on the river. But regardless, Illini here at the 13 minute mark, up 2,000 gold. That big river skirmish fight in Nubia in the top lane, helping them extend that lead. Mastermind's Aatrox severely behind here, and for the Panthers, 
where do you turn to to try and come back in this game? I wonder if Alzahend on the Vi is going to be able to find any picks out on the map. I mean, they just said they just haven't been able to combo this this assault and battery and Nico ultimate, right? I mean, that is so much lockdown and so much burst coming out that they just haven't been able to say, hey, definitively, we're gonna go on this person, we're gonna go on here. Like Alzen goes in, he goes in by himself, his team's not there, he gets bursted out, has no one to ult. Killer guy is either pushing a side lane, he's not around to these objectives. Like this team just, for whatever reason, Drury's just not syncing up together right now. They just aren't, they aren't playing collectively. They're kind of playing their own game on the team. Yep, and now Monkey coming back up into the top lane, maybe looking for a dive. Will be able to at least counter jungle, worst case scenario. But he's looking for Mastermind underneath the turret. They've got the combo, the Dragon Range, the Unstoppable Force. There's just no quit in Illini up in the top lane. Mastermind, five deaths in under 15 minutes. They've put in a lot of time kind of shutting down that Aatrox, ganking him from the get-go after that initial solo kill. Meanwhile, Refugo in the bot lane where that is supposed to be picks up a kill onto the Jinx. Now he's going to have to try and kite out. He's got three levels on Ulzahend, but the ultimate is available. The punch Ooh. there comes out. Assault and Battery is going to be what Refugo's charged for. He gets sentenced with being sent back to base. Yeah, unfortunately goes the fountain. Overall, one for one trade across the map, right as the lantern comes out, takes Silver Ritter to safety. Azula goes down, has the Kraken available, but crucially Refugo as well has got his Kraken Slayer online. So Mythic's coming on for everybody. A little bit of a uh, emote spam action uh, coming out from this squad newbie. I saw him spamming the, the, the Malphite laugh in the dance. Silver Ritter also spamming, uh, I believe, one of the emotes here. So, Illini just kind of having fun in this game right now, uh, but still playing it very, very well. 26 to 23k, three, nearly three and a half thousand gold lead for themselves. And Illini just kind of take down this final mid lane inhibitor turret for themselves. Or, sorry, mid lane turret, not inhibitor. <laughs> not yet. Not yet, Chippy. We'll get yet. there. Maybe the second roof tier will bring in the same success we saw in the first game. Refugo in the bot lane. Gotta Zula. be careful. It's just Azula's revenge, though. He's he's familiar with the 1v1 Monkey. against the ADC here. Now, Monkey Flash oh! Ward Kick. Beautifully done. Azula cannot step up as uh, the clean Monkey is back at it again. Chef's kiss. That is as a Mwah. beautiful of a Lee Sin play as you could get. I saw the Q go on, I was like, oh, oh, he's gonna do it? Is he really gonna go to land this? Like you said, gets the nice kick, flash kick, ward hop available. Refugo able to kind of capitalize on it, burst some down. Azula did not have any time to flash or cleanse, as now the hook comes in. Killer guy, preemptively. Ooh, Primordial oh. Burst plus the Electrocute is going to be enough for the Execute. Oh. Mythic blocks the rocket to keep Super Fast oh Monkey God. alive. And another hook underneath the turret. They're too clean, Shibby. Another hook to drive Fat Cat underneath the turret. Do they have enough? They've used a lot of resources. Mastermind trying to cash in the Lantern. Not going to be able to use their Silver Ritter. Gets taken down. Illini may have bitten off more than they can chew. The Panthers send all five members into the mid lane. That's going to cost them minions in the side wave. But the skirmish continues as Refugo has joined the battle. He's got one kill. Can't pick up a second. Mastermind, Mastermind. trying to get kills there. But he only gets one. Two for four overall in favor of Illini as Refugo's Kaisa finishes up with a double. Ooh, Mythic on this Thresh. Man, he says, ban my zillion. I'm going to show you pain. Hook after hook after hook. <laughs> landing onto Drury Panthers. The heat-seeking missile. It's not a skill shot. As Refugo might end up paying for his life here. Refugo. No ultimate. Tried to flash away. Alzahand lives. Silver Ritter. No primordial burst available. But has a feeling which killer guy is the real guy. Backing away though, Newbie is here, Mastermind joins, Mythic takes the super explosive cone, flies away from 
the Drury Panthers here. Now they're squatted up here. Look at this is something we didn't really see in the last game, Shibby. This could be the deciding point for the Panthers in this match. They got to take the fight. They're trying to look for it. Alzahend getting shut down and stuck in the gate. He's the first to fall. It's a four on four. Now as Batcat tries to get the pick, tries to flash away. Now Mastermind with a whole lot of damage. The monkey runs for the trees. He's trying to escape. The Panthers have found a winning fight, Shibby. Mastermind looks for the flank. The Event Horizon will cut him off. Super Fast Monkey still looking for the damage. Oh! That's Mastermind falling. Monkey barely survives. Fat Cat is the next to go. Azula's Revenge soaring through, but gets taken down underneath the turret. Now Refugo has the ultimate, dashes in, finishes off Killer Guy, and that's a complete ace for Illini. Complete ace around the dragon. Super fast monkey living as well. He's going to be here to secure the smite. Refugo coming in. I believe he died early on when the fight started. He died. The <laughs> fight went on for so long, Mac, that he said, you know what? I could just rejoin this. Wait a minute. Yep. <laughs> Flies in with the Kaisa ultimate. Overall, like you said, a nice ace for a lying eye. 37 to 30k, 7,000 gold in the lead at the 20 minute mark here. They're going to take potentially the mid lane turret as well here. You just take a look at the player gold here. Newbie, Refugo, Super Fast Monkey, kind of the top of the leaderboard for Illini. Well, Azula on this Jinx has been performing pretty well, has picked up a couple kills like you said. And if you just keep giving shutdown gold over to a champion like this, she can definitely bring it back. We've seen crazier things before. Especially in the MEC. Isn't that right, Chibi? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, just yesterday's games, right? I mean, it was so wild. Uh, the comebacks and everything that's been happening. I think MEC, at least this season, you can never truly count a team out. Yeah, but for the Panthers, the window of opportunity is quickly closing. They have the numbers advantage, though, right now for this potential fight. Dredge line misses, but Alzahend thinking about pressing forward. But Mythic, super tanky on this Thresh, a really solid frontliner to help keep Silver Ritter safe. And I think underneath this mid lane turret, Drury Panthers looking for the fight, looking for the dive. They're trying to finish off Mythic, but they just can't finish off the Thresh. Now the turret damage coming through. This was a 5v3, but here come the reinforcements. Oh. Here comes the fighting Illini dashing into the fight and clearing out the Panthers. Four kills go over. The Panthers get sent packing. Refugo is going to clean up that kill onto Killer Guy. Death timers are still a little low here, so they're not going to be able to get too much. Super Fast Monkey not up for this Baron. I think they still might try to go for it. They're going to push that mid lane turret in. Yeah, they're just going to go for it here. Alzahen can play hero. He does come back up. He is up now. He's going to be beelining it towards that Baron. They don't have the quickest Baron right now. It's Vigar, Kaisa, and Malphite. Is he going to be able to make it? It is going down 4,000 HP, 3,000 now. I think he'll be able to get it. Smite. No, no smite coming in, just that W. They're able to pick it up. I, for a second, thought Alzahen would make it, but just, I believe, a second or two shy. Yep. Couldn't quite get there in time. Illini's gold lead has ballooned all the way up to over 10,000, Shibby. And at the 22-minute mark, they are in complete control gonna be now sieging up i feel like they don't have the best solo laners for a 131 so they might just send all five members down mid and newbie taking a trip to the library pops uh, <laughs> pops in bringing the 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 i'm not gonna say bm item but the definitely like feeling yourself like yep. you know I, I i i'm feeling good i'm never gonna die i'm malphite Right, I, I love this pickup from Newbie. You get a lot of ability power. You get a lot of... Another Ooh, fight minute, here, Fat Chibi. Cat. Fat Cat is the first to fall as he gets caught by the death sentence. And at this point, Ooh, it seems one. like a guarantee from Illini. A big ultimate coming through. An explosive cone knocks everybody around. But it's multiple members of the Panthers going down. Only Monkey has fallen for Illini. The seismic shard slows him down, and Newbie gets another kill. 6 2 and 13 on the Malphite. Refugo 10 2 and 7. Illini Esports 
up big, now pushing into the base. Resh is not okay. In that fight alone, Mac, he threw out four hooks. You hit one and Another refresh one. the cooldown. <laughs> yeah, and look, he's gonna have it up. He has it up again. Like I want to see the the ability cooldown on that when he hits it. I believe it's like four seconds if he hits a hook because he's got all that CDR. That is absolutely disgusting. I, I, I mean, I, yeah, it's it's just wild. It, it I've seen clips of it potentially being on a permanently off cooldown, just constantly hooking. As uh, in that fight, Newbie adds to the pages 20 stacks on the Medjai's in a line eye. Now extend their gold lead. Look at that Baron power play. It's earned them 4,000 with the bot lane inhibitor going down. Seems like a uh, dragon is a consolation prize at best here in this game. Yeah, but I don't even think Illini is going to give them that courtesy. The TP coming in, newbie into four people. Says, you know what, Grump, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Says, see you later to the rest of the Drury Panthers. But look at the potential flank. Silver Ritter One hook. is looking for a pick. The AD carry, as well as his mid laner. They're face tanking okay. everyone as Super Fast Monkey picks up the killer guy. This is just a complete wipe, Shibby. Illini with the clean ace here to finish off game number two baron buff may be down but the death timers i think are long enough to completely sweep this series yeah two roughly 25 minute games coming out from illini start to finish top to bottom back and forth today yesterday last month this month illini esports in absolutely dominating fashion with a new roster, with a substitute team, with guys and not in their roles, they take the 2-0 for both days of the MEC and solidify themselves a top three standing. Their first season here in the Midwest Esports Conference, they put the cherry on top on what has been a wonderful debut here in the MEC, Shibby, it's been a pleasure to watch these guys on the drip, on the rift through what they draft. Uh, just an exciting addition to a stacked League of Legends competition group. And uh, unfortunately for the Drury Panthers, that's going to be it for their regular season. But luckily, we get all of these teams in the playoffs. Let's take a look at the regular season standings for a quick second there. Don't worry about it. The Panthers down at the bottom with a little <laughs> Illinois college there. Van Chivy, what a series. As uh, Illini closed things out pretty cleanly, 2-0. None of those shenanigans from yesterday that Coach wasn't happy about an almost potential comeback against him after being so far ahead. He said, we got to clean things up here to finish off the final week. Yeah, he's like, we got to clean things up. You guys might just end up playing in playoffs the way you guys are doing. <laughs> I mean, you, you, it's crazy to me because if the players are playing at this level you almost have like a an internal scrim level team where like mm -hmm. you take your mm -hmm. starting five from Illini and you just take your yeah. other five <laughs> players and say you know what let's just run some composition let's some, run some internal scrims I mean uh an absolute dominant performance regardless of the players regardless uh, of who's 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 kind of scratching on the rift I think really Illini esports uh drafting has been impeccable across the season right as we can kind of mm -hmm. take a holistic mm -hmm. look at both of these teams now there's a regular season's end i think illini i think everybody was pretty surprised right when i talked to some of the players when i talked to some of the coaches yep. I, I asked like what was the biggest surprise a lot of people said like gvu not being like as dominant as they were that was one of the things for sure right mm -hmm. uh, i think another thing was uh, unsuspecting was that illini Kind of coming in as, I wouldn't say a dark horse, but more of just like a, wait, we got to watch out for that team. Like, that team's very, very good. Mm -hmm. And so really, really nice to see that these guys playing with the chip on their shoulder, like you said, first season in the conference, coming out with a, a very solid top three finish and can do some damage in the playoffs. Yep, it will be exciting stuff going on next week as we start off playoffs on friday march 17th mark your calendars as uh, the mec playoff action will start off a little early this week 
But we're going to hop into a quick break as we get ready for the post-game interview. We'll be talking with, with, with one of the players from the Fighting Illini. Don't click out of that browser. You won't want to miss it. We'll be back in just a sec.
Hello everyone, welcome back to the Unified live stream. We've got our post-game interview with the top slash support from the Finding Illini, our main <laughs> man, Newbie, has joined us once again for the post-game interview. How are you feeling today, my man? Uh, feeling really good. The, the games were just so fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, we we could tell you guys are definitely freestyling a little bit on the rift. <laughs> I saw some emote spam. I saw some laugh spamming for you guys. Kind of talk to me about the environment coming in. I don't want to say these games were necessarily meaningless for you guys, but you guys were pretty much locked into your position, barring, you know, it, it's pretty much out of your control at this point, right? You kind of have to mm -hmm. wait for maybe GVU getting upset. Uh, wh what was that mentality coming in? Were you just kind of like, hey, this weekend... Some of our team members are on spring break. We, we, we were kind of messed up for the roster this weekend. I'll go top. We'll have some fun. If we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. What was your guys' mentality coming in? Well, obviously, we want to, you know, even if the seedings and rankings, like, don't matter or out of, are out of our control, like you said, we still want to win. So mm -hmm. we kind of, we, we definitely course, focused on that. Uh, we unfortunately had to get an emergency sub because it was our spring break and a lot of our members were not available as you could see by our roster. Uh, so, you know, we just, we flipped some roles, we switched some roles around. I, I was put in the top lane and we just said, hey, if we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. Like, we will just like play the game and try to have some fun. And Nice. Yeah. It worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I counted uh, three solo kills on the killer guy and three onto Mastermind, so it looked like a blast up there in the top lane. But I'm curious, as the Fighting Illini turn their attention to playoffs, for you guys, is anything going to change this week in terms of prep as it's time for crunch time? Um, well... We'll just keep uh, scrimming as usual. We'll try to find scrims. Mm -hmm. Prefer um, I think we'll have our main roster back by near the end of the weekend. But for the people okay. who have uh, setups, like I'll mm -hmm. be, I I'll have my setup at home. We'll be nice. grinding solo practice, and we'll, you know, do our best uh, at playoffs. Uh, it, it, talking a little bit more more about playoffs any teams that you're particularly looking looking forward to facing or, or maybe are like a little bit on the lookout like hey i mean obviously ottawa we saw yesterday they're looking kind of top dog gvu is still a very strong team is there anyone you're really exciting excited to take i know uh levi threw a little bit of twitter fun action at you i don't know if you saw that last time you guys faced off is that is that kind of your rival right now is it ottawa uh i will say as a team yeah i think I'm most excited to face Ottawa. GVU as well, of course. They are ranked above us at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know about the Levi thing. Because I don't usually... I'm not on the League Twitter side. Because uh, League is kind of like... Still not my main game yet. So I'm not in that community on Twitter <laughs> yet. Yeah, you're on, the, you're on the anime. I know your Twitter. You're on the anime... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, yeah. I got everything, man. I'm deep diving. I know everything about you players. You're the oh, anime, man. manga, Osu Twitter, right? Your fighting game Twitter. I got you, newbie. I understand. Oh, I feel it. But, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, so I, I don't really check that stuff out yet. I don't, I don't know what he said, but yeah, if he, if he, if he talked some stuff, I understand <laughs> it. I kind of did talk some smack on the first week of uh, the Lance. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> unintentionally, I swear. But uh, hey, it's all fun. It's all fun in yeah, games, right? Fun. Everybody let me see. It's just banter. It's just banter. I'm glad uh, that you you are definitely excited to kind of face off against these top teams and the confidence that you guys exude definitely shows in your drafting definitely shows in your guys's game plan and that's the one thing i want to see into playoffs i want to see the emote spam i want to see yeah. the laughing i want to see everything uh mackie your final question I'm curious, newbie, if playing in person for playoffs or even just playing in person in general, what sort of impact does that have on just playing in these CLO games for you guys? In person? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, even just like at the LAN events or even, you know, just otherwise. Yeah, like these the LAN events are just, just so fun, right? I get mm -hmm. to see all my teammates in person. We get to have 
many events we can party after uh i think <laughs> in general it brings our uh like our moods are lifted just because mm -hmm. of the environment uh mm -hmm. absolutely love it i really much prefer if we could do it like any chance we can whether it uh -huh. be like at a you know at our computer lab we can play together or just like another mm -hmm. land for the upcoming playoffs but yeah it's just at, at, in person is just so fun it's it's i think it helps us play better nice nice well we look forward to seeing how you guys perform come playoff time i'm super excited even you guys got me hyped up not only just for finals but potentially semifinals and quarterfinals as well so best of luck to you i hope we see you pop off in wichita if you guys make it that far i'm sure that you know everything's gonna come together beautifully man wish you safe travels and before we let you go i do want to give you a moment to throw out any shout outs uh i want to shout out two people today i want to shout out the weed for uh handling the drafts uh today and yesterday nice. you managed to uh draft i think very well for us mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. these two for these two games like with these random ass oh <laughs> random roll swaps so uh get one oh, everybody man. gets one my bad, my bad. <laughs> and then i'd also like to shout out joe kim the uh main person motivation uh main motivating factor for our our team definitely mm -hmm. the star he carries he carries our performance he carries everything he's just the goat the goat yeah for sure man well <laughs> newbie thanks so much for talking with us for the post game interview we wish you a happy spring break man take a deep breath take a little breather away from school and i hope you enjoy it man yeah thank you so much all righty everyone that's going to do it for mac and shibby during the regular season that's it we're done it's over for us man and come playoffs this weekend i know we're just gonna take it up to another level man i'm super <laughs> excited to see how these teams do man we appreciate everyone checking out the streams, tuning in, and supporting these college players on their journey through the Midwest Esports Conference. We've got more MEC action coming your way later on in the day. It's going to be a bit of a gap, but tune in for Ottawa Braves taking on Illinois College at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. for Shibby Out West. That's going to do it for us. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day.